Hello there, my fellow mobsters. What's up? It's Robbie here with Open World Games, and we are taking an extensive look at Mafia 3, because guess what, guys? I got to play six hours hands-on time with Mafia 3. Special thanks to 2K Games for paying for my trip and lodging out in New Orleans. Uh, I got to do a swamp tour. I got to check out so much amazing stuff, guys. More on that in just a moment. But in this video... Uh, I'm going to be going over a little bit of the story, just generalizing it for you without spoilers so you have a brief idea of what to expect. Is it going to be any good? Uh, because I got to play about four hours of that and then free roam on top of it. Plus, we're going to be checking out the open world replay value and the map size. And we'll be moving on to the mission structure. How exactly does that work? Then... We'll be talking extensively about the gameplay, weapons, and stealth mechanics, and so much more. And finally, we've got some news about some post-launch content and the DLC plans for Mafia 3. So this is a full blowout of all things Mafia 3, guys. So let's dive into it. So the general story is this. You play as Vietnam veteran Lincoln Clay who returns home to find only racism and hate choking the life out of New Bordeaux, which, by the way, this is the fictional representation of the very real New Orleans. And again, I got to explore New Orleans. Uh, it was a ton of fun, and I really do have an idea of how amazing this fictional representation is of New Orleans. They nailed it, guys. From the Swamplands to the French Ward, it is all there. And by the way, yes, this is a full-blown open-world game. You better believe it. It's divided into 10 districts. Now, each district has its own flavor. You got rich districts, poor districts, and everything in between. We've got Fresco Fields, which is going to be our more Richie Richie Heights-type environment. Only the white people can really stay here. And when you enter this area, guys, expect, you know, the N-word to be flying around and cops to be all over you. If you cause trouble here, you are pretty much screwed and you have to get out of town. And yes, some districts are a lot more difficult than others, so you have to really learn your way through the game. Then we've got Point Verdun, Barclay Mills, downtown, which is absolutely beautiful at nighttime. The French Ward, which is like stepping back in time, Tickfall Harbor, Delray Hollow, Bayou Phantom, River Row, and South Downs. And as you go south, you'll notice that there's a lot more marshland in uh, the open world compared to the rest of the map. It's a ton of fun seeing the diversity in that way, uh, for sure. And yes, there are alligators in this one. Now, the rumor is you might actually be able to feed a dead body to the alligators. I'm curious to see if we're going to see a mission around that. I would not be surprised if that was the case. But yes, racism is a big theme in the open world. I mean, just exploring a park, for example, you will get cops walking up to you and asking you to leave. Uh, it's very, very interesting. It's like you are experiencing racism firsthand. Plus, if you walk into a store, some stores are for only white people and the cashier will actually shut down his register and say, hey, you've got to leave. Get out. This is for white people only. And I just knocked the dude over the head and stole all the money. So you can have a lot of fun with it, of course. Uh, but it definitely has these serious undertones. But yeah, because of it, it kind of encourages you to mess with people in this game. So there is a lot of freedom in that. So yeah, uh, you can go around killing innocents. But they will go and call for help. you got to stop them. By either killing them, and which can end up being a chain of just like constantly trying to kill witnesses, which is pretty hilarious. Uh, or you can disable the phone. So uh, free roaming in this game has its risks, uh, especially if you get into the more fancy, richy rich districts. So what about the gameplay? How does it feel? Well, the third person controls are absolutely amazing. They are dead on. This has a cover system, of course. And it's very easy to get into if you play games like GTA 5 or other third-person games just like this. And by the way, I was playing on the Xbox One controller on the PC and it felt great. Now the animations, they are top-notch. I love his little hobble after he fires his weapon. It just looks so freaking realistic. I haven't really seen 
uh, such detail with the animations after you fire your weapon. It's like he's truly reacting to what he just did. And the weapons themselves feel great, by the way. The grease gun is my favorite, definitely, just by the sound and its oomph. It can really uh, kill anyone that stands in front of it. Shotguns are especially powerful and beastly. And if you are unhappy with, say, the Thompson machine gun, uh, you can actually upgrade its performance. Like I mentioned, upgrades are a big part of this game. I was quite disappointed with how the Thompson machine gun was so weak, but man, the grease gun made up for it. And I was actually surprised at how important stealth is to this game. It's a huge part of the game, more so than you think, simply because Lincoln can carry only so much ammo. So it's wise to really use your stealth uh, as you go through some of the harder areas in the game and really get used to the game. He also has uh, some vision mechanics as well where he can see through walls. And this is also tied into the story. It comes from his combat training in Vietnam, which I think is a really cool uh, story narrative connection uh, for sure to the gameplay. Uh, you can also lockpick in this game. This mechanic is super easy, no big deal uh, there, but it's a fun mechanic. Uh, to get into a building from the uh, rear and flank your enemy. Uh, but man, combat is especially amazing though. I am like tempted to not do stealth at all. I just want to get into combat. That's how I play. Even though sometimes it could be a little bit rough doing that. Uh, there's some amazing, crazy, vicious, brutal takedown moves in this game. Basically, you hold down the melee button when you get close to an enemy that's injured and they come in a wide variety of flavors and are very different dependent on the weapon you are currently holding so you will see some absolute carnage guys trust me you can also perform a cool tackle move as well if you soften up your enemy you can tackle him and just knock him out i love this move it just flows so well with the game and yes there's a wide assortment of explosives and special weapons but they are limited and everything costs money so again be careful how you spend and you're probably asking yourself can i continue free roaming the game world after the story is complete and the answer is yes you can freely roam and do all of the side activities that you missed out on now there's something very interesting about that as you take over districts in this game you'll be given the option to close down the district and continue uh, the story, or you can uh, actually continue taking on all of the side activities before you continue the story. So there are choices there uh, before you close down the district. And I'm going to get into that in just a moment, a little bit more into details about how uh, you can actually take over a district. But yes, uh, if you decide to continue the story, it kind of decides to push forward past a district and that district will turn green on the map and it will be completed uh, to where you do need to move on. Uh, but yeah, what about districts? How in the world do I take over a district and why are they important? Well, the goal of the game is basically revenge. It is a revenge tell and you are wanting to take over all of New Bordeaux, but that requires you to take over one district at a time and to do this, you will have to tackle several different mission types. But you don't have to complete all of them, but us completionists will want to. Uh, but you are wanting to get the mob boss of that district out of hiding. And to do that, you need to interrogate his lackeys by getting in there, killing everyone, and then interrogating uh, some poor fool. Or participate in assassinations. You can destroy uh, their economy gradually by destroying whatever... Uh, is of value within that district. Of course, there are more dynamic missions like following targets and finding out information in that regard. Basically, destroying property that is valuable to them will also hurt them. You're trying to really hurt their economy, uh, which is their security. And then once you do, this will lure out the mob boss. Once you see their money hit zero... The mob boss will pay attention to you and he will come out of hiding and he will want to talk to you. Or you'll just want to go in and murder the guy. It is up to you. Now, what's interesting is each of these rackets within these districts actually revolve around a theme like sex, drugs, or the union, and more. Now, once you confront some of the leaders here in the district, 
you can actually decide to turn them to your side by buying them out and they can actually work for you or you can of course kill them so there are options there uh, it's very very interesting and it really does encourage replay value because the uh, differences from hiring someone uh, to killing them can be actually pretty significant now once you actually take over the district you need to assign a new mob boss to run that district besides you can't run everything yourself you're out killing everyone so you have three lieutenants to choose from and they are key characters within the story they aren't just nobodies they are very important to the story which I think is awesome and they include Cassandra Vito and Burke I'm sure that you've probably heard of these names before if you have heard of Mafia 3 and each of these lieutenants offer their own extensive perks weapon rewards and more which you can call in in game while you are playing in the game world now if you do piss them off they will leave you and you will lose access to that perk tree which is a pretty severe penalty so you have been warned big time now within the districts you will be dealing with mob boss retaliations they will send out their lackeys to try to assassinate you just like you are trying to assassinate them they will try to take you out what's really nice is to have a super fast car so you can get away that's very very helpful but a lot of times you have to stop and engage them directly but if you're on the water at least from my short play time I've noticed that you can get away a lot easier so just remember that one now if you are roaming around and you are noticing that you're getting so many witnesses calling on you and it's becoming such a pain in the butt you can actually uh, call in wiretaps and also have the phones disabled to prevent witnesses from calling the police so that is one of the perks that you are offered as you play the game and yes there are other ways to call in support uh, including hit squads these guys are so awesome this is definitely my favorite perk in the game you can have some all-out warfare here uh, there's also a mobile weapons dealer who will offer you a wide a range of weapons assault rifles shotguns all of which can be upgraded to improve their damage and accuracy and there's a lot more to that including grenades that you can buy and some really cool heavy weaponry as well of course this all costs money so you have been warned choose wisely but Robbie what about safe houses can we actually have our own safe houses in Mafia 3 yes there are some sort of safe houses they aren't extensive as some other games uh, but once you take over a district you can go there uh, deposit your earnings because that's really important by the way you don't want to die and lose some of your earnings which can actually happen if you have too much in your wallet you will regret not visiting your safe house and depositing your earnings now what about the story is it any good so I spent four or so hours in the story and let me say the story is much better than I initially uh, was going into this thinking it would be and the reason I was thinking that it could be you know a little bit more of like this angry tell like constantly like that is because of the trailers I thought that the characters were gonna be just angry all the time but I was very surprised at how actually they were so freaking likable even some of the bad guys are very very likable um, and some of the best movies and you know TV series have very likable bad guys it kind of reminds me of Assassin's Creed 2 in terms of the revenge tale propelling the player forward by the passion of the kill you are definitely seeking revenge in this game and you are going to want to get back onto the story there's a connection to Vietnam, which is a very fascinating mix with the Mafia themes. I think you guys will definitely enjoy that. And one of my favorite bits about the story is it ties so well into everything you are doing in the side activities and the actual game world. So they really do a good job of making this feel like a real uh, lived-in place. Now, what about the graphics? I can think you can already tell the graphics are very, very impressive. I was playing on a high-end PC, and the frame rate kept up at all times even when I was in a high-end car exploring full speed across the map now there are some pop-ins when driving at high speeds but it is an open world game and that's kind of to be expected but the game especially shines when you are on foot during missions or entering interiors and man the cutscenes are absolutely amazing the mocap the facial work is just top-notch guys and there is a full day and night cycle with weather as well 
And you know, the swamplands are a nice change of scenery from the more urbanized square environments that you get into, although those are even beautiful looking, especially at nighttime. And again, those animations are amazing. And what about post-launch content? There will be post-launch content DLC for this game. Uh, we're going to get a mix of paid content and free content. Immediately after launch, the free content will be races, outfits, and weapons. You will be able to customize Lincoln Clay uh, by changing his outfit, and you will be getting a few cool new weapons as well. But paid DLC is going to be coming in the form of three narrative-driven uh, expansions, and one of them really does fascinate me. It's about uh, Lincoln Clay and his ties to the Vietnam War. One of his war buddies has returned, and he is causing all sorts of trouble. I cannot wait to play that one. Uh, so it looks like uh, this one is going to be very, very promising. Again, it comes out October 7th. Uh, mark that on your calendars. I am sure you will not be disappointed. If you love single-player open-world games, uh, you will love this one. By the way, this does not have multiplayer. I should confirm that with you guys. No multiplayer in this one. It is strictly a single-player experience, which I think is a wise decision. You know, Hangar 13, the developers initially said their mission statement was to make a really high quality single player game and that is apparently what they have done for my time i just absolutely love the game so far and i cannot wait for the full-blown version here october 7th so guys stay tuned here to open world games i'm going to have a ton more coverage of mafia 3 and more open world gaming goodness you better believe it thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you soon enough in new bordeaux